Hi, and welcome back. So a new study, the first of its kind, has shown that calorie restriction in humans does indeed slow the pace of aging. But by how much? Well, let's find out. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health, which covered a study that was published in the journal Nature Aging that showed a specific percentage cut in calories in humans did result in the slowing of aging and a 10 to 15 percent reduction in mortality risk. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. In a first of its kind randomized controlled trial, an international team of researchers led by the Robert N. Butler Columbia Aging Center at the Columbia University Mailman School of Public Health showed that caloric restriction can slow the pace of aging in healthy adults. The calorie intervention slowed the pace of aging using measurements from the participants' blood DNA methylation. This was completed using the algorithm Deneed in Place which stands for pace of aging computed from the epigenome. Daniel Belsky, PhD, senior author of the study and associate professor of epidemiology at the Columbia Mailman School said, in worms, flies and mice, calorie restriction can slow biological processes of aging and extend healthy lifespan. Our study aimed to test if calorie restriction also slows biological aging in humans. The Calorie Phase 2 randomized controlled trial is the first ever investigation to test the effects of long-term calorie restriction in healthy, non-obese humans. Calorie is an acronym for Comprehensive Assessment of Long-Term Effects in Reducing Intake of Energy. The trial randomized 220 healthy men and women at three sites in the USA to a 25% calorie restricted or normal diet for two years. Professor Belsky stated that humans live a long time, so it isn't practical to follow them until we see differences in age related disease or survival. Instead, we rely on biomarkers developed to measure the pace and progress of biological aging over the duration of the study. To measure biological aging, the team analyzed blood samples collected from the trial participants at the pre-intervention stage and at the 12 and 24 month point. The team analyzed methylation marks on the DNA extracted from white blood cells. DNA methylation marks are chemical tags on the DNA sequence that regulate the expression of the genes and are known to change with aging. In the primary analysis, the team focused on three measurements of the DNA methylation data, sometimes known as epigenetic clocks. The first two, the PhenoAge and the Grim Age clocks, estimate biological age or the chronological age at which a person's biology would appear to be normal. So how far they've actually traveled, similar to an odometer in a car. The third measure studied by the researchers was the need in pace, which estimates the pace of aging or the rate of biological decline over a set period of time. The need in pace can be thought of more as a speedometer in a car. Callan Ryan, PhD, a research scientist at the Butler Aging Center in Columbia University and co-lead author of the study, noted that, in contrast to the results for the need in pace, there were no effects of intervention on other epigenetic clocks. The difference in results suggests that dynamic pace of aging, measures like the need in pace, may be more sensitive to the effects of intervention than measures of static biological age. Dr. Belsky stated that our study found evidence that calorie restriction slowed the pace of aging in humans, but calorie restriction is probably not for everyone. Our findings are important because they provide evidence from a randomized trial that slowing human aging may be possible. 
They also give us a sense of the kinds of effects we might look for in trials of interventions that could appeal to more people like intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. So, what were the results of this two-year study? The intervention effect on the Dunedin pace represented a 2-3% to reduction in the pace of aging. In other studies, this translates to a 10-15% to reduction in mortality risk, an effect similar to that of a smoking cessation intervention. A follow-up of trial participants is now ongoing to determine if the intervention has long-term effects on healthy aging. In other studies, slower Dunedin pace is associated with the reduced risk of heart disease, stroke, disability and dementia. Sai Krupadas, PhD, a professor at Tufts University and the calorie study investigator who is leading the long-term follow-up of the participants, said our study of the legacy effects of the calorie intervention will test if the short-term effects observed during the trial translated into longer-term reduction in age-related chronic diseases or their risk factors. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So a 25% reduction in calories over two years resulted in a 2-3% to reduction in the pace of aging. And that equates to a 10-15% to reduction in mortality risk. The study is still ongoing, so we should find out in the future whether or not these results are similar or in fact they have improved. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the study and let me know, could you do a 25% reduction in calories for the rest of your life if you wanted to slow the pace of your aging. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.